how on earth do you trust someone who is halfway across the earth who you've never met before? How are you supposed to trust them to work with them in your business? This is one of the number one questions that I get asked, and you will be surprised to know that not only can you trust someone who you've never met, who's on the other side of the world, but you can build an incredible working relationship over the course of years that really stands the test of time, that becomes a very high quality partnership and incredible working relationship. But stick with me to the end because I'm going to show you the number one thing that you can do to feel completely confident that you can trust the person that you hire as your virtual assistant. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the little bell so you get notifications whenever I upload a new video. If you're new around here, I'm Jen Lehner, and I have helped hundreds of coaches, course creators, authors, solopreneurs exponentially grow their business by outsourcing. So in today's video, I am going to share with you my top tips for building trust with a virtual assistant, even if they're halfway around the world and you have never met them in person. So number one is having a, it's really the hiring process itself. It's having a rock solid system for screening applicants. And I'm not going to go way in depth on this. I've got other trainings about this, and I'm going to invite you to a, a live training that I have coming up on this exact topic. But in short, you want to have sort of a self-screening process throughout from the minute that you post your ad from to them accepting or filling out an application and then maybe going to an online interview document, which is not an interview at all. It's really just another form where you ask more questions. And all along the way, people are going to be, unbeknownst to them, eliminating themselves because the answers to the questions, you already know, okay, if they can't work these hours and they they've indicated that on the online interview form, then they're already taken out of the running. So after screening people sort of in an automated fashion, then you're left with the all important live interview that typically happens over Skype or uh, Google Meet or whatever. Doesn't have to be video, can just be audio, but one of the two for sure. And my favorite question in the interview, and this was true for when I was in the corporate world as well, and I used to interview people, my favorite question is, number one is, tell me about yourself. This gives them a lot of room to tell you things that, you know, that I'm pregnant or I have three kids who are under the age of four. They'll tell you about their family. They'll tell you maybe about their hobbies, but it's a great way to really quickly get an idea of like the gist of a person anyway, right? Once you have narrowed down who it is you're going to hire, I actually recommend narrowing it down to maybe your top three candidates and putting them through a trial week. So now you're paying them for the trial week, but it's not a commitment for to work with them forever. It's just a trial week, a chance for them to get to know you, get a sense of what your business is like, and for you to get a sense of how they work. And boy, is this telling. Now, the way that we do it is we might have three people who are coming through on their trial week, each of them has their on their own project board. So we use Trello. So each person has their own Trello board. The people do not know that maybe that you have other people who are also in the trial week. So you are literally able to compare everyone's work and see sort of how fast they complete their work, how thoroughly, how closely they follow directions. How many times did they interrupt your day in order to be able to complete that work? The trial week is really great. But even at this point, you can't say you necessarily can trust a person just based on their work output. That doesn't really tell us much about trust. At this point, based on the interview and the work that they've done, you're kind of relying on your gut in instinct at this point, right? So my next tip is once you do officially hire someone is to start slow. You're not going to give away the keys to the castle right away. So you're going to start with sort of low risk tasks. Maybe that is they're going to prepare transcripts for you, or they're going to create graphics in your Canva account. Nothing that is going to give them access to something that if something went wrong, it would ruin you. 
right? There's very few things where that could probably happen, but I'm just saying start small. My third tip is kind of an obvious one, but let your virtual assistant ask questions. Now, I personally do not like being interrupted throughout the day. And I find a lot of people who have tried to hire virtual assistants in the past have been really frustrated because they feel like the VA needs so much guidance that the thinking is, well, I might as well just do it myself. So one way around that is we have a daily check-in document. And you don't have to use this forever, but it's really great to use for like the first year with your virtual assistant. And we ask three questions. Number one is, what did you accomplish today? Number two is, do you need help with anything? And number three is, do you have any suggestions for me? This is so valuable because you will really get great suggestions from your virtual assistant and might learn things about their skill set that you didn't learn in the interview process. And This daily check-in sheet shows your virtual assistant that you care what they think and that you are here to help them and assist them if they need more clarity on something. And my fifth tip for you is that trust is a two-way street. And so what that means is in order for you to trust your VA more, your VA also needs to trust you. And that means you need to pay on time. You need to deliver on whatever promises that you made and be a good listener. And part of being a good listener means if something does go wrong, that we don't freak out about it. And freaking out can look differently across platforms. For example, if you're communicating on a project board like Trello or in writing in general, and there's a mistake and you write in all caps, you're yelling and This can make your virtual assistant feel really bad. And then your virtual assistant is going to feel really bad. And then in the future, your virtual assistant is not going to ask you when they need help. The work is going to suffer. And eventually the relationship is going to fall apart. So this is really important that delivering constructive criticism, of course, is encouraged. We just want to watch our tone, right? We don't want to look loud or insensitive. Here are two really brass tacks ways, really practical ways that you can feel very comfortable in the beginning, giving access to your online business to a virtual assistant right from the get-go. And I'm going to put links to both of these down below. These are tools, one that we still use in my business and one that we have used in the past. So the first one is called LastPass. And what LastPass does is it allows your VA to access any of your accounts. So it could be your Canva account. It could be your email service provider, any platform where they need to go in and do work on your behalf or just they need to do work. It allows them to log in without knowing what your password is. So you create a folder and all the places where they're going to have access is going to be in that folder. Now, if for some reason things don't work out with this virtual assistant, it's just as easy as removing their access to one folder and they suddenly have access to nothing. That is great. And honestly, even if you don't have a virtual assistant, LastPass is just a great tool for storing your passwords. And then the last one is called Hubstaff. Now I'm going to put a big asterisk next to this one because I don't love it. I have found that some of my students, when they're first learning how to outsource, they like it because, and this is going to sound super creepy, but it allows them to actually see their VA screen throughout the day. What do I mean by that? Well, literally the software is taking snapshots and you can have it set to the time increments of your choice. I think the most rapid one is like every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, the software captures a picture of your VA's computer screen. It will also show you all of the URLs where your VA has visited um, and any apps that they have used. I always say like, If you're going to use this, maybe you just do it for like a couple of weeks or a month because it is kind of creepy. But on the other hand, as a conscientious business owner, you need to know that, I mean, it's not just about spying on your VA. It's also about understanding how much time they're spending where they're going to be tracking their time in some sort of platform anyway, but this is showing you very specifically, like you would be able to see, oh, wow, Camille spent 
six hours creating a graphic for our podcast episode. That's very informative to you as the CEO. Also, this happened to me one time where I was able to look at the screenshots and see that the virtual assistant was actually in the wrong YouTube account. And he was in my personal YouTube and not my professional YouTube, which was fine. I mean, there wasn't anything I minded him seeing. It was just, he was doing a lot of work in YouTube. And so this was wasting both of our time. So I was able to catch that right away and sort of save that situation. So I'll put links to both LastPass and Hubstaff down below. And oh, but one more thing about Hubstaff, your VA does know you're not doing this without their knowledge. When they log into the software, they are aware that their screen is being captured. So very important. So I have a free masterclass coming up. It's the Solopreneur to CEO Secrets Workshop. It's all about how to create more white space in your business. So you have more time to do the things that you love and to scale your business once and for all. So just go to ceosecretstraining.com to sign up. So thanks for watching today's training on can you trust a virtual assistant? If you like today's video, be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notifications button so you'll always be notified when I upload a new training.